Hi, everybody. Welcome to Map Your Way Through Levels CD and Multiplication and Division Tutoring Books 1 and 2. My name is Rachel, and I'm really glad you guys have joined me today. I have a lot of material to cover, so I'm just going to jump right to it. At the very end of this workshop, I will open it up for questions, so feel free to hold on to those questions until then. Whenever I go on a trip, <clears throat> I like to take some time to find out how to get there, how long it takes, determine what the best roads to take, highlight interesting places that I might want to stop along the way, and what roadblocks that might be in my way to prevent my progress, such as traffic or rush hour or toll roads or whatever that might be. So that's what I'm going to do in this workshop. I'm going to map you through levels C and D and discuss multiplication and division tutoring books one and two. We're going to look at how long it takes to complete each level. Um, we're going to look at the major roadways that these levels will take you and your child through. I'm going to point out some enjoy the scenery moments that's going to highlight sections and lessons in the books that your child most likely will enjoy along the way, as well as I will mention some roadblocks that tend to um, get in the way of your child successfully progressing through a level. So let's get to it. I'm going to start by talking about level C. Now, the quick overview of level C is this, just like with all of the Right Start Math levels, level C is going to talk about numbers, sense, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division, fractions, time, money, geometry, problem solving, all of the topics that you would expect a comprehensive math program to cover. However, one of the main con concepts that's going to be focused on in level C is subtraction. Now, just like all other Right Start Math levels, level C is designed to be completed in one school year. Now, there are 140 lessons in level C, and as homeschooling families, we are supposed to teach 180 days in the school year. So that gives you 40 extra days um, to linger on lessons or to review any lessons that your child might need a little bit more practice with. So how do you know if your child is ready for level C? Well, if your child just completed level B, they're ready for level C. Just get going on it. However, if you are coming from another uh, program, another curriculum, or you're pulling your child out of school, the best way to determine uh, which level to place your child is to take our online placement test. Now, you can find that by going to our website, and up on that right side, you'll see placement tests. Also on our website, you can take a look at Level C's objectives and sample lessons by going to, again, our homepage, click on resources, then sample lessons, and then click on Level C objectives and sample lessons. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the road that Level C is going to take your child on. First off, when you first open the book, you're going to see about six review lessons. These lessons are a review of concepts. Now, if your child has not worked through Right Start Math before, you need to work through these review lessons. They are going to show you how to use the manipulatives and strategies that is used in Right Start Math. Now, the content of these lessons are going, is going to be very basic, but it's not really about the content. It's about the methods and philosophies that Right Start Math uses. So even uh, if you're new and you think that student, it, your student already knows that material, still do not skip those lessons if you are new to Right Start Math. However, if you've been using Right Start Math before and your child's moving from B to C, then you can skip these first opening review lessons. Level C will review, spend some time reviewing addition. It will talk about some basic addition math facts, some strategies and problem solving strategies that include addition. It's also going to work your child and, and help them practice multi-digit addition problems with carrying and um, trading. Now, that brings me to the first roadblock. If you find that your child is struggling with addition math facts during that opening addition review section, 
you will want to spend some time playing math card games to develop those addition math facts and get them a little bit more fluent. Um, I would regularly, when I saw my child kind of struggling, I would stop lessons for just a little bit and simply play card games to build up those math facts strategies and make sure that they were a little bit more fluent. Um, your child is going to need to be fairly fluent with those addition facts for the rest of the level. So kind of take that moment um, and, and spend some time developing those facts. By the way, what is a fact fluency? How long, how do you know if your child is uh, fluent in their facts? Um, Dr. Cotter always says that for the average student, they should know their math facts and solve them within two to three seconds, giving them time to uh, mentally use those strategies to find the answer. As I mentioned before, your child is going to work on subtraction in level C. They're going to start by working on the basic math facts, and they're going to learn strategies throughout this uh, section to help them learn and get a little bit, uh, get those uh, subtraction facts a little solid. Which brings me to the next roadblock. One common roadblock that parents have when teaching level C is the fact that they do not like to teach maybe all of the strategies, especially the ones that they don't resonate with per, uh, personally. Here's the problem. We all think differently, right? So when I taught my kids, um, I have four kids, and I quickly discovered that each child thinks and learns differently. One strategy would work with one child, another strategy would work enough with another child, and neither strategy would work with me. So make sure that you do not skip these strategies because it just may be the one that your child really needs um, to learn those math facts. Another roadblock, subtraction math fact fluency. Now the lessons towards the beginning, we're talking about addition and then we're working on subtraction facts. Um, the next group of lessons after that is going to pull away from ar arithmetic a little bit. So you definitely wanna keep up those math card games. Even when the lesson doesn't say to do a subtraction math card games, make sure you're, you're, you're playing those games to keep your student fluent and learning those math facts. Then your child is going to learn some advanced subtraction. They are going to work on multi-digit subtraction problems. Now, I absolutely love how Dr. Cotter helps students understand the trading and borrowing process by experiencing it um, rather than memorizing steps. Now, the approach is similar to this. They, the, the student is given a four-digit uh, problem or four digit minus four digit problem and the student then uses base 10 picture cards and place value cards we personally call this activity bank actually and then they solve that four digit subtraction problem by trading when needed now enjoy the scenery um freedom to linger on the lessons now my kids really really enjoyed that lesson that focused on the, uh, the trading process of the base 10 picture cards and the place value cards i felt that this activity this uh, game uh, was so important to their learning process that i actually did this lesson for about three or four days um depending on the student now the next lesson is going to do the same activity, but instead of using base 10 picture cards and place value cards, it's going to use side two of the abacus and have the student write down those answers. Again, I lingered on those two lessons and we just did it day after day for probably about a week or so to solidify that experience. By the time we were finished with that though, my kids definitely had that process down of when to borrow. Here is a roadblock. If you have a child with some learning struggles, I have two in my home um, that have um, dyslexia and dyscalculia. Um, sometimes they would flip their numbers around or write their numbers backwards. To, if you have a child like that in your home or struggles with writing, I recommend that you have them solve the problem using place value cards first and then let them copy over their answer. It really reduces that mental drain on them. So that's just a little kind of a trick for you. All right, so then in level C, we'll continue on and we'll teach multiplication. Your student's going to learn about arrays. They're going to see how multiplication is related to addition. They're also going to see the difference between calculating perimeter, which uses addition, and calculating area, 
which uses multiplication. And your child is also going to learn about factors. Here is another enjoy the scenery moment in level C. Now, it is not expected that your child have all of their multiplication facts learned by the end of level C. However, if your child um, expresses interest in multiplication, there is no reason why you can't continue to play those math, math card games that focus on multiplication. And if you want to explore more, Use your math card game book, look into the multiplication chapter and pull some more games to help them experience more, um, have more fun with playing with multiplication math card games. Another beautiful section in level G, or I'm sorry, in level C is geometry. Um, this is a beautiful and unique unit. Um, all of my kids and really, really thoroughly enjoyed this section. One of the reasons they enjoyed it was because it gave their mind a little bit of a break from working through arithmetic. But I think another reason was that they simply enjoyed these lessons because they were fun. Now, here's an example of what one of the lessons we'll have your student do, they're going to use drawing tools to uh, create all kinds of shape. Now, it may be tempting for you to skip this section, but if all, at all possible, don't. Why? Well, first of all, your students need to understand that there is more to math than arithmetic. In fact, arithmetic is only one of 200 and more fields of math. So let your child explore some of these other fields. Also, do not skip this section if you have a child who struggles with arithmetic. And I hear you're saying, what? <laughs> that sounds a little counter counterintuitive, doesn't it? Well, why do I say that? If my, well, my child has some learning disabilities that I mentioned before, and he really, really, really struggled with arithmetic. Um, and when we got to this section, my son lit up. I mean, he loved it. In fact, he requested to do more than one lesson every single day. And so we did. We actually did two, sometimes three lessons of this section um, for him. Now, when we were in the middle of that, he said something really cool to me. He says, Mom, I am really good at this math. So he built up his confidence. Do not take away the opportunity for your child to experience that math topic that really resonates with them. The biggest roadblock. Now there are so many elements in level C that I'm not even going to touch on for uh, time constraints here, but I do want to mention the biggest roadblock for level C and really all of the levels. And that would be skipping the games. Without the games, your child is not going to learn those math, fa math facts or become fluent with them. Even though it's really, really tempting to skip those math card games, make sure you spend 10 to 15 minutes every day um, playing those games. Now I glossed over all of that content. If you are currently teaching level C or you will be teaching level C next year and you want more specific information about the lessons and how to teach them, um, you may be interested in our level C overview videos. You can view those by going to our website, click on resources, then click on teaching support, and then click on weekly overview video support, and finally click on level C. I am not going to show you that picture because it was a really bad hair year for me, <laughs> so I don't want to show you that picture. You can find it out on your own if you go check it out. Now, if you are ready to go into get into level C, what do you need to get started? Well, if you have been using Right Start Math and you have all of the manipulatives, the only thing you need to buy are the level C book bundle. You have everything else that you need. Um, however, if you are new to Right Start Math, then you do need to buy two pieces. You need the book bundle and you need the RS2 math set. Each of our elementary levels, levels A through F, use all or almost all of the manipulatives in that set. So you can't, you need you need those items. Um, however, next year you only need to buy the book bundle. Here is a tip for your trip through level C. We have a resource that you might find helpful. Some parents have expressed their desire for these game instructions to be available on video. Well, we have that for you. You can find all of the game instructions uh, for level or level C through a Vimeo subscription. You can subscribe and unsubscribe at any time. 
And as a subscriber, you can quickly view a video, learn how to play a game, or uh, you can give, let your child watch that video and let them teach you how to play the game, kind of removing yourself from that learning process. All right, let's go ahead and jump into level D. Just as with all of our Right Start Math levels, level D is going to talk about number sense, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, time, money, geometry, and problem solving. All the topics you would expect a comprehensive math curriculum to cover. However, there is one concept that's con concentrated on, and that would be multiplication. Just so you know, multiplication is hard for many, many, many students. So even if your child has breezed through A, B, and C, you may find that level D is a little bit more difficult for your child, and that's okay. That's kind of the norm. As with all Right Start Math levels, level D is expected to be completed in one school year. Again, there's 140 lessons in level D. We are expected to teach 180 days in a school year, which gives you 40 extra days to review or linger on some lessons. How do you know if your child is ready for D? Well, if they finish level C, they're ready for level D. If your child is coming from another program or if they're coming out of a school or whatever and you wanna determine placement, the best way to do that is to take our online placement test. You can go to our website and click on placement test. You, again, with level D, you can review uh, the objectives and sample lessons by again, going to our website, this time clicking on resources click on sample lessons, and then click on level D objectives and sample lessons. All right, well, let's take you through the road that your student is going to go through on level in, when they go through level D. Now, level D will open up with 11 review lessons. If your child has not worked through Right Start Math before, you do need to complete these lessons. They are going to show you and your child how to use the manipulatives and strategies taught in Right Start Math. Um, the, again, the content is going to seem really, really basic, and it's going to be really tempting to skip those lessons, but don't do that because it's going to teach you how to teach Right Start Math, and it's going to help your student learn how Right Start Math teaches. So don't skip those lessons if you're new. However, um, if you've been using Right Start Math, you can skip these first 11 lessons unless, um, I've done this a few times, if you want an easy beginning of a school year and uh, you can go ahead and do those first 11 lessons, or if you feel like maybe we just need to review a couple concepts, you can redo some of those review lessons that way too. Level D hits multiplication pretty hard immediately after those review lessons. Um, recognize though that most students are going to take pretty much all year learning those basic multiplication math facts. Um, one of the things that you're going to find in level D is that it's going to introduce a variety of strategies. Now, most likely you learned multiplication just like I did through memorization, drilling, flashcards, more memorization, more drilling, more flashcards, and on and on it goes. But there is a better way, and that is through understanding. Now, I have two children um, who I've mentioned before have working memory struggles. Um, if I required those kids to memorize those math facts, they still would not know them. However, because they learned how to think about math facts, how to break them apart, and how to figure out to, uh, a way to find the ones that they didn't know, they would never have learned them. So that's what those strategies are going to do for your kids. So don't skip those strategies. A roadblock. It is vital that your games are played daily, um, even when the lesson doesn't suggest a game. Multiplication, like I mentioned earlier on, is hard for many kids. So keep up those math card games. That's going to develop um, fluency and help your child learn those multiplication math facts. In fact, if you find that your child is starting to struggle a little bit with those math multiplication math facts, stop the lessons and just play math card games for a couple days, a week. One time I actually spent a month just playing math card games, building that up. You are going to be amazed at how smooth lessons going, are going to go after you come back from your child working on those math facts. 
Now, while much of level D will work on multiplication, it's going to teach a lot of a host of other significant topics. Um, your child is going to learn about order of operations, including parentheses and squares and what order to do each operation. Other important topics covered in level D are rounding factors, multi-digit multiplication, check numbers, graphing, perimeter area, measurements, weights, money, time, geometry, and of course, fractions. And that is where I'm going to pause for just a minute to talk about enjoy the scenery. And I can hear some of you groaning. Um, you're like, are you kidding me? Enjoy fractions. Um, actually, yes. I think one of the highlights in level D is a beautiful unit that covers fractions. Now, in this unit, your child is going to learn how fractions affect geometry, half of a shape, a fourth of a shape, measurements. When using the ruler, they're going to look at half of an inch, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, time, half of an hour, quarter of an hour, money, half of a dollar, quarter of a dollar, tenth of a dollar, liquid, gallons, half gallons, quart, and even music, whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note. I think I really love this section because it helps students recognize that fractions affect every aspect of our lives and they're not scary. This unit provides an application for fractions without having the student just complete worksheet after worksheet. The biggest work uh, roadblock for level D and really all of the levels, as I mentioned before, is the temptation to skip the games. However, without those games, your students are not going to learn the math facts or become fluent with them. So even though it's really, really tempting, you're having a really hard day or whatever the situation is, make sure you spend 10 to 15 minutes playing math card games. Now I glossed really quickly over the content for level D. However, if you're currently teaching level D um, or you're gonna be teaching level D next year, you might find these overview videos helpful as they will walk you through different lessons and help you learn how to teach them to your child. You can get to those overview lessons by going to our website, clicking on resources, clicking on teacher support, and then clicking on weekly overview support. And then of course, choose level D. What do you need to get started if you're in level D? Well, if you've been using Right Start Math, the only thing you need to buy is the Level D book bundle. However, if you have never used Right Start Math before, then you will need to buy the book bundle and you need the math set. As I mentioned before, this math set is used in all of our elementary levels. Next year, the only thing you need to buy would be the Level E book bundle. Another tip for your trip through level C, you can find the game instructions on video through a Vimeo subscription. Subscribe and unsubscribe anytime um, and quickly learn how to play the games that are in and required for level D. One of our newest tutoring programs is Multiplication and Division Tutoring Book One. Now this program has 59 lessons, and in these lessons, your child is going to learn basic multiplication, and that would be facts one times one through, oh, actually it should be 10 times 10, not one through 10, one times one through 10 times 10. And they will also learn basic division facts. Now, who should use MD1? Well, it is designed for students who are two or more years below grade level and who are struggling with basic multiplication and division facts. Now the student is going to learn strategies to help them learn those facts and be given numerous opportunities to practice what they're learning and become fluent with those facts through games. What does each lesson look like? Well, each lesson has an activity and that activity then is followed with a game. Now the child is going to have the opportunity to practice what they've learned in the lesson. Now, so, just so you know, there are no worksheets that are included in this program. Uh, we have found that students who are struggling with multiplication facts are either burned out on worksheets and timed tests and flashcards, 
or they might even have a learning struggle that involves writing. So worksheets is not the best option. Um, just to, as I've mentioned and uh, hit over and over and over again in this entire workshop, um, games are such a better approach to learning. Um, why is that? Well, when a child is playing card games, they're not being graded, right? They're not being timed and they are free to just enjoy the moment. So when you remove that stress of performance, students begin to actually perform better. Now, while your child is playing the math card games, let them use the manipulatives. That way they can find and look up the problems they do not know. Then the next time they come across that problem, it's more likely they're going to remember, but if not, let them look it up again. As you well know, children are not going to waste their time looking up something that they already know, right? So let them use the manipulative. It's actually kind of like a scaffolding process. Let them use it and they will uh, eventually wean themselves off of it until they don't need them anymore. Introducing Multiplication and Division Book Two. This is our brand new tutoring program. This program has 47 lessons in it, and it's going to help the student learn multi-digit multiplication as well as multi-digit uh, division. Um, and your students are gonna learn the short and, uh, short and long division processes and what to do with remainders. Um, one other element in this program that I really like are the word problems. There are lessons called skill lessons that is going to present word problems. And the student is going to learn how to break apart those problems and how to um, work through them. Many of them are multi-step problems. Most of them will have um, used the operations of multiplication and division, but some of them will actually use other operations as well. Who should use MD2? Well, this program can be followed by MD1. Uh, for students who are behind, still two years behind or below grade level and who are struggling with multi-digit multiplication and division. Um, I will say that make sure before you put them in MD2 that they do have their basic multiplication math facts solid. Practice again is done through gameplay. There are no worksheets in this program. However, there are grid paper pages that you can copy to help keep their uh, numbers lined up. There are also word problem pages that will help your student follow along that word problem and give them a little space to draw diagrams or solve that problem. This is what an, one uh, segment of MD2 lesson would look like. Again, each day has an activity followed by a game to help them practice and put into practice what they're learning. Roadblock, very, very important that you understand that these tutoring programs are not a comprehensive program. They are designed to help your student catch up and learn the multiplication and division facts and processes. This should not replace your comprehensive math curriculum, which hopefully is Right Start Math. Um, don't replace your curriculum with these tutoring programs. Um, you can view samples of these lessons by going to our homepage, clicking on resources, going down to sample lessons, and then at the, uh, towards the middle of that page, scroll down a little bit and you'll find book one and book two of the multiplication and division. You can take a look and see what that, those lessons look like. So if you have never used Right Start Math and you are interested in one of these programs, you will need, um, if you wanna go into MD1, um, you will need that full kit. You need all of these items to work through a multiplication and division tutoring book one. Now, if you um, have your child already has those multiplication facts down and they are just really just struggling on the processes of multi-digit multiplication and division, you can just jump into multiplication and division two kit. That's what you're going to need. Um, now, if you have worked through Right Start Math before, you only need the two books. If you have um, worked through multiplication and division tutoring book one and you're ready to go into two, the only thing you will need is the book two. I hope you have a little bit better idea of what level C and D will cover as well as what multiplication and division tutoring books one and two will cover. 
Um, I am going to get ready to open it up here for questions if you have any. However, if you prefer to do this offline, um, you're more than welcome to call us uh, at 888 272 3291 or email us at info at rightstartmath.com. All right, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself because I'm not seeing the, uh, the chat box right here. So feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. There Rachel? was one in the chat that said, are these tutoring books included in level D or are they separate? What is the extra cost in that case? Okay, so a lot of this material is pulled out from the philosophies and styles that is already in the curriculum. However, they're kind of like woven and created a little bit differently, assuming that the, because the child is having difficulties, it's kind of spread out. So where one lesson is going to, uh, there is one lesson in the level, it may be broken up into two, maybe three lessons in the tutoring book, kind of spread out with more activities. Um, so here's the thing. If you have completed, say, level D, and your child is still struggling with multiplication and division, um, whether it be the math facts or the process, um, then you, all you will need to do, because you already have the materials, all the manipulatives, the only thing you will need to get is the, the, the manual. So multiplication and division tutoring book, which is $27. Or if you're getting the second book, just get the book, which again, is, uh, multiplication division book two, which again is $27. Um, Rachel, I read, I was going to say, I read the question real quick as, are these tutoring books included in level D? They oh. are separate. They are separate books. So you either start in with the tutoring and then go, or you, or you're in the, on the right start math. So it's kind of like the, the tutoring is a bridge to get you to the right start math. Does that answer your question? Oops. I was trying to pull this up. There we go. I think in that situation, one thing to note too would be that you, if you have a level already and you have the math kit, you probably just need the book, not the yes. kit for the tutoring package. Yes. Exactly right. There is a, another question. I would like my tutoring family to subscribe to the game video. Do they do that from your website under resources? Yeah, but I just put the link on. Okay. Yeah, access to the Vimeo video games um, is through Vimeo itself. See, I see another one that came up. Do the regular level books A through D give all of the strategies for teaching addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, or do the tutoring books give additional strategies? Actually, um, all of the strategies are in the curriculum. Um, the tutoring will just re-emphasize it and may linger on some of those strategies some extra days. But all of the strategies are still taught in the curriculum itself. All right. Well, I am so glad everybody joined me today. I know I flew through it really quick, um, but feel free to contact us if you have any other information or any other questions, and we're happy to help you. Have a great day, everybody.